is Columbia 409. It's Nancy Pryor, stewardess. Something hit us. All the flight crew is either dead or, or badly injured. There's no one left to fly the plane. Help us! Oh my God! Airport 1975 is a sequel to the 1970 hit film and like the original movie features an airline disaster and an all-star cast. The movie revolves around a very busy flight, Columbia Airlines Flight 409, a red-eye Boeing 747 en route from Washington, D.C. to Los Angeles, California. Head stewardess Nancy Pryor, played by actress Karen Black, arrives at Washington Dulles Airport and meets her lover, Captain Al Murdoch, played by Charlton Heston. Arriving in from New York City, Murdoch wants to have quickie sex with Nancy. I can do wonders in 30 minutes. Well, I can't. I guess we'll just have to wait till tonight. What flight are you on? The Red Eye Special. Nancy suggests that they fly together to Los Angeles, but Murdoch is leaving earlier in hopes of getting to L.A. and finishing all his work before her arrival. Nancy gets angry that after six years together, all Murdoch seems interested in are furious post-flight humps. I was really hoping we'd have a chance to talk now. You didn't feel to me like you were interested in talking just now. You're back in that same old kick about us. If that's what you want to call it. Come on, what's all the rush all of a sudden? Rush? I've been on this particular kick for six years now. Maybe I'm tired of one night stands. He again tries to persuade her for a 30 minute round of sweaty coitus. Oh, baby, I've only got half an hour. Can't we talk it out when you get to LA? Don't miss your flight, Murdoch. You wouldn't want to keep that boss of yours waiting. She angrily rebuffs him, and he flies to L.A., and she remains in Washington awaiting her later red-eye flight to L.A. In the meantime, passengers of all sorts board the red-eye flight to Los Angeles. They include a teenage girl named Janice Abbott who is headed to L.A. for a kidney transplant, played by actress Linda Blair. Two friends named Barney and Bill, played by Sid Caesar and Norman Fell, who are headed to California for a fun time. And two nuns, Sister Beatrice, played by Martha Scott, and Sister Ruth, played by Australian singer Helen Reddy. The crew is led by Captain Stacy, played by actor Ephraim Zimbalist Jr. First Officer Urius, played by Roy Thinnes. And Flight Engineer Julio, played by Eric Estrada. In Santa Fe, New Mexico, a businessman named Scott Freeman, played by Dana Andrews, has an urgent sales meeting in Boise, Idaho. He boards his private Beechcraft Baron to fly to Boise. As a storm front causes heavy fog along the entire west coast of the United States, both Columbia 409 and the Beechcraft are diverted to Salt Lake City International Airport. We're fogged in here solid. Salt Lake City is open. Roger, Boise. Will you give me a vector direct to Salt Lake? One four zero degrees. Turn right. Due to extremely heavy fog up and down the California coastline, we're going to land at Salt Lake City. As both planes approach Salt Lake, Columbia 409 is on final approach when Freeman suffers a heart attack. As he grabs his chest, his little aircraft leaves the assigned air traffic control pattern and descends into the approach pattern of Columbia 409. The beach craft impacts the flight deck of the 737. Freeman is killed as the small airplane explodes. First Officer Urias is instantly killed and blown out of the 737. 
and flight engineer Julio is killed by falling debris. Captain Stacy is struck in the face by glass and is blinded. Nancy runs up to the flight deck and sees the captain engage the autopilot and the altitude hold just before he loses consciousness. Nancy contacts Salt Lake Control. Joe Petroni, played by George Kennedy, reprising his role from the original film, is now Columbia's Vice President of Operations. I want Al Murdoch on this. Try his apartment. Now listen, how much time do you estimate before a course correction is needed? Ouch. All right, hang on. Have them get Exec 1 ready. We're going to take the lead to Salt Lake. He and the airline's first flight instructor, Captain Murdoch, fly from Los Angeles to Salt Lake City on the airline's executive jet. En route, they communicate with Nancy, hoping she can fly the plane and avoid high mountain ranges until a risky air-to-air rescue can be attempted. There's Salt Lake City, and there's 409. Now look at the terrain in between. There is no way we can talk Nancy through those mountains and down through a safe landing. It's just too much for her. The only way is to put a pilot into 409. You mean a mid-air transfer? A jet helicopter is fast enough to keep up. We can put a man out on a tether. Do you know what it would be to put a man through that hole? God damn it, there isn't any other way! With Petroni's wife, played by Susan Clark, and his young son on board the doomed 747, the personal stakes are high as he and Murdoch do all they can to save the passengers before it's too late. Also starring Jerry Stiller, Linda Harrison, and Gloria Swanson as herself, this movie was directed by Jack Smite, and it was a sequel to the 1970s smash hit Airport. George Kennedy is the only actor from the original movie to reprise his role in this sequel. The 747 used in the movie cost $30,000 per day to rent from American Airlines. All exterior shots of the aircraft were completed in just two days. Actress Linda Harrison stars in this film as Gloria Swanson's personal secretary, and she had changed her name to Augusta Summerland for this movie. She acted with this name twice more on television before retiring. She was given this role as a consolation prize after being passed over for the role of Ellen Brody in the iconic film Jaws. Ironically, Charlton Heston had also been lobbying hard for the lead role of Chief Martin Brody in Jaws. Charlton Heston said that he began working on this movie only 15 hours after he had finished work on Earthquake, also starring George Kennedy, which would be released one month after this movie. Australian-born singer Helen Reddy performs her 1971 song Best Friend with an acoustic guitar for Linda Blair's character. She's a good singer. It's an entertaining moment in the movie, and I actually liked it quite a bit. That's why I am a best friend to myself And I take me out whenever I feel low friend would I'm as nice to me as anyone I know Nevertheless the singing nun character would be parodied and made fun of along with a lot of other things from this movie in the 1980 comedy hit Airplane There is only one river There is only one sea and it flows This movie would also be parodied on the CBS sketch comedy The Carol Burnett Show in a sketch called (laughs) Disaster 75. Control Tower, this is Nancy! This is Flight 1313. Oh, can you hear me? Nancy, this is Murdoch. Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, it's you. (laughs) Yes, I can hear you. Nancy. I want to talk to you. Well, I want to talk to you. And I want to talk to the pilot. Keep your pants on. What? Not you, sweetheart. Yes, you do. 
Despite all of the constant parodies and satires of this movie, Airport 1975 was a huge box office hit. Upon its release on October 18, 1974, Airport 1975 grossed a worldwide total of $103 million and was one of the top 10 grossing films of 1974. I think this movie was okay, not bad, not fantastic, but I've seen movies much slower and much more boring than this. I'll go ahead and give it the same 7-star rating that I gave the first Airport movie. If you like disaster films, you should check out Airport 1975.